Hey guys, how's it going? It's Douglas here at Drumway Productions, bringing you another Screaming Ghostface Collectors video. Today we're going to be focusing on one thing and one thing alone, bobbleheads. Unfortunately, we're not going to be looking at the very, very first Ghostface bobblehead, as I don't quite have that one yet. But today I have finally completed my original set of Royal Bobbles bobbleheads. These are a more modern Ghostface item. I think they were released last year, so I believe 2021 they were released, maybe late 2020. I remember them being announced, and at first we only had, I think, one or two variants announced, but they ended up doing four variants total. I've been able to pick up a couple of these along the way, but the other two I was missing out on, and just recently I got very, very lucky to pick up both of those. So we're going to take a look at these, starting with the original style and working our way down the list. I'll talk about where I got each of them, and I think I'll probably go ahead and open these up and just take a look at them. Uh, it looks like they're not sealed on the top, so I presume you can open them, remove the bobblehead, take a look at it, and put it back without damaging the packaging. I think it'll go back in the same way. So to start things off, we have actually the newest arrival. This just arrived, and I just opened it right before starting this video. This is the standard Entertainment Earth Ghostface Royal Bobbles bobblehead. This one, of course, just has him standing, cleaning the blade off of what appears to be a kitchen knife, not a buck knife, which is an odd detail, but still, these were only obtainable directly from Entertainment Earth, so if you did not order these online, you'd have to get lucky maybe finding someone else, some other retailer possibly, that picked them up to sell them in person. Unfortunately, I missed out on getting these when they were initially up for sale, and I regretted it because, of course, these days, everybody just buys stuff and flips it for multiple times the value right after it comes out. This has been no exception and finding one of these for the original price has been very very difficult and I actually got really really lucky on this one and someone listed it up for just a few dollars cheaper than retail. After receiving it unfortunately it's got just a little bit of like light scuffing on the surface of the box but it's not damaged or anything. Uh, all the decorations or all the advertising rather I should say for the box still looks quite nice but uh yeah here's just a full 360 of the box. I guess we'll take a look at all the boxes for these first and then we'll open them one at a time. All right, next up we have what is probably my favorite of the lot and this is the one that was picked up for me by Morgan Cheyenne Hester. This is the FYE exclusive Glow in the Dark Royal Bobbles Bobblehead. Pretty much the same exact body sculpt. Everything looks to be the exact same as far as I can tell and uh, the only real difference here is the fact that the head's cast in like a glow resin, so it glows in the dark. Now the packaging is a little bit different. I think like the position of the head on the bobblehead. Yeah, yeah. The original one here, his head is kind of cocked off to the side, whereas with the glow in the dark, put them side by side, it's more like straight up and down. Very, very awesome piece. Like I said, the glow in the dark is probably going to be my favorite of all of them just because anything glow in the dark is awesome and uh yeah i greatly appreciate morgan picking that up for me and let's move on to the next one this was the other most recent pickup i got this one like an hour or two before the cheaper very first entertainment earth version popped up here we have the walmart exclusive blood splatter version so this theoretically should have been the easiest one to obtain and our local walmart all the walmarts around me do get Royal Bobbles figures. They had the Michael Myers, they had Pennywise, all sorts of stuff, but no ghost face. Anywhere I've went looking for one of these in person, I've been unable to find one, so got really unlucky there. I kept holding out from buying one online when they were even just a little bit of a markup because I was hoping to find one in person and just get it for that initial price and maybe get, you know, just a better box, which this one came in absolutely fine. It's perfect, there's no issues. It's just sometimes with shipping, you never know what could happen. As for this one, it appears the box is exactly the same as the initial Entertainment Earth version. They've just photoshopped on the blood splatter. And uh, yeah, they've also done that on the blade. So if you look, the knife he's holding actually does have blood on the end of it for the blood splatter version. So most of these pretty much uniform packaging. So far, all three of those have the same body sculpt, same head sculpt. The only difference, blood splatter, got a little blood on the knife, a little blood on the face, glow in the dark, the face is cast in glow resin, and you know, the standard one is pretty standard. They all appear to have a base that's just a dripping bloody base, but all of those are the same, except for this last version. The last variant we have here is the only one that I managed to find in person. Here we have the Hot Topic exclusive. This one, pose-wise, is probably the coolest. I guess we'll see how it looks when it's opened up, but 
We've got Ghostface standing there, brandishing one knife upwards, hand resting on top of a TV with some VHS tapes, and a bloody bowl of popcorn spilled on the base. Pretty freaking sweet. So, really cool that this one had its own body. I kind of wish each of them had their own pose, because that would have made it really cool and collectible, but I guess even with just doing the blood splattered and going the dark version, that's still really awesome. So now we get to the fun part, which is going to be opening these up. I'm going to try and be as careful as possible. Of course, I don't want to damage these. And to be honest, guys, this right now, this experience that we're sharing is probably the only time I will ever have these open. Unless we do get that museum one day, maybe I'll display them in front of their boxes. But even then, I would almost prefer them to just be displayed in the box. Don't want to mess up this styrofoam, but it seems pretty snug in there. Okay, so it looks like upon unsealing this, there will be one thing that will be a giveaway sign that these have been opened, and that's the fact I'm gonna have to cut the tape on the styrofoam here that's holding it, keeping it protected. Well, I forgot my unboxing knife, so I guess we will be using the Buck 120 from that recent video. Just gonna very carefully unseal the tape on one side. All right, he is carefully nestled. All right, these are really, really well packed. I hope he's not completely sealed in the plastic where I'm gonna have to rip it. Okay, it's open at the bottom. I noticed they've got the neck wrapped up just to keep it as is. I'm not going to unwrap the neck because yet again, there'd be no point other than you guys being able to see the head just move ever so slightly. Here is the statue. Because at this point, it's pretty much just a statue. Really good sculpt. I like the proportions. I like the bloody base. All the blood application looks good. There's one little scuff, I guess, towards the front of the base. On the bottom of the base, they do have an authentic product number, I guess in case anyone were to try and recast these and reproduce them in the future, which hasn't been unheard of for this kind of stuff. All right, so that was opening up the first one. So I guess let's do it with the next one here, which is the glow in the dark. I almost kind of don't want to open the rest at this point because I know they're all going to look pretty much the same. But at the same time, I do want to see them. And the point of doing this is to show you guys, who knows, maybe five years from now, these are incredibly hard to find and people just want to look at them because they may never be able to get the chance to have one. I hope it's not to that point, but be honest guys, with collecting stuff, you never can tell. There's Ghostface stuff that even came out five years ago that's really sought after now, so you never know. Ooh. Very, very nice. So this is the glow in the dark one. Obviously it's the same exact sculpt. The blood application looks pretty much the same. Maybe a little underpainted on one corner. The body being solid black is gonna be really hard to mess up. Knife looks good, well painted. The face, however, the mask is painted fine. It's just a little bit odd that it was like the transparent like glow in the dark vinyl, or not vinyl, resin. You guys get what I'm saying. I'm thinking about masks over here. It is his mask, but still it's a resin casting. I do like it. It reminds me of almost like the light up masks or even just the old like transparent kind of greenish color hockey masks. I think it'll look good once it's actually glowing, but just on display as is. It's not bad, but I think just uh, during the daylight, the white one does look a little bit better. Next up is the Walmart blood splatter version. Now this is the one that could have the most variants. I feel like the others, pretty basic, black and white, little bit of the heads cast separately. So, okay, glow in the dark, cast it, paint the rest black. Sure, that's fine. Hard to mess up. Blood splatter is a whole different thing, especially when it comes to action figures, stuff that's being painted on an assembly line, stuff like that. Sometimes the blood can look really bad. Sometimes it looks fine. I guess we are about to find out which one this is going to be. Well, I mean, it definitely is blood splatter. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's not blood all over his costume. It's just on the mask, just on his face. I don't know how it wouldn't be, I guess, on the 
footage. You wouldn't see it in the movie, you know, it'd just be showing up on the face, but at the same time, I guess that's actually not too bad. When I think about it, if they did just literally have it just speckled red all over it, that would look a lot lazier than just having the mask be a little bit bloody. The nice blood application looks fine. You can actually just barely even tell that it's bloody. The face, I mean, it looks like he's got chicken pox almost. But, yeah. They probably just had a bunch of these on an assembly line and somebody went by with like a toothbrush or something and just flicked a little bit of blood right there on the face. So, so far, amongst them all, display-wise, finish-wise, everything, I'm voting the bloody version as my least favorite, and I'm voting still so far probably the glue in the dark as my favorite, but that is subject to change because let's take a look at the Hot Topic one. I can see why this one had to be the Hot Topic exclusive because with the size of it, the way that it's made, these would not have been a good thing to try and ship to individuals. Shipping them all together to a company like that is definitely the choice. Just looking at the way his knife is positioned and the way he's made. Granted, these are packaged very well. I will say that these are well nestled in the styrofoam that they're in. So they did a good job there. Okay, well, I don't know guys. I think this one might be my favorite. Yeah, this one's this one's gotta be my favorite of them all. The glow in the dark is cool, but after looking at them all and they're all pretty much the same and it's just a little slightly tinged different. I mean, seeing it glow in the dark is cool, but most of the time that you're gonna be looking at it will be in the light. This displays very well. I like the pose. The knife has got the blood there on the end of it. It looks well done, well painted on. Face looks good, of course, same head sculpt. And the base here, the bloody popcorn, Looks a little, little poorly painted where they splattered a little bit of blood on it. But other than that, the TV looks really good. The wood texture that they did painting the wood texture on the TV is very, very well done. There's a potted plant and a couple of VHS tapes on top. Um, obviously you can't really tell what they are because it's just like a bland VHS tape, but they even went to the trouble of putting all the audio video ports in the back of the TV and they are correctly color coded. So. That's the kind of little small detail shit I love to see on stuff like this, so... Guys, all in all, after looking at them, I gotta say, I think my favorite is the Hot Topic one. It has the coolest bust, um, or I guess the coolest display stand, body piece, whatever you want to call it. The heads are all the same, but this one's gotta take the cake. I mean, clean mask, bloody knife, coolest stand. I think it's gotta be the best one, but let me know in the comment section down below which one you guys like the most. And I guess there's really nothing left to do but give you guys some nice close-ups on these. Yet again, you won't be seeing the heads bobble because I will not be unwrapping the neck, but at least you'll get some nice close-up shots of the bobble heads themselves and get to enjoy the sculpture. And with that being said, I think that about does it for today's video, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Love you all and see you next time.